10 years ago, when we started doing this, it was before I met Jim, uh, Vince Lukowski, who we need to all thank. Let's do that right now, by the way. Let's thank Vince for doing all this work. And uh, we had a client that told us to, uh, you know, look into thorium, and I won't go and I've told that story a thousand times, but as we got into it, you know, uh, in 10 years, uh, 10 years ago, we got sort of called a, a boatload of fanatics. You know, and as I have there's, you know, not helpful. Uh, but we've also had a lot of successes. You know, we had uh, the first, the Bills 4884, and uh, we're, we're put out there uh, several years ago. And of course, regular order hasn't existed for quite a while. So we're, you know, we, we um, that sort of went by the wayside and we were looking at other solutions for policy change. Uh, but outside of policy, the things that we all want to see happen, a, a new nuclear future, all that, it's, it's just taking far too long. I mean, we've been at this for 10 years and people were thinking, you know, by the 50th anniversary of the MSRE, we're going to turn on a new molten salt reactor. It's like, well, where's that? You know, the only people close to doing that are in China. <laughs> And even they're kind of so, but you know, once again, when you least expect it, you know, they drag us back in, and so you know, just like the Godfather, out of nowhere, uh, we got this bill from uh, Marco Rubio's staff, took a shine to what we were doing, and then uh, just last week, uh, Tipton put a companion bill in the house. They're fairly well supported bills, uh, and what they really probably should be is is considered. Uh, a big message to the administration and Commerce Department and that that you know we need policy change you know stand hopefully they get incorporated with within other policy but the, the fact is that standalone bills just don't pass much anymore so these whatever these morph into this it's just nice to see but that's not probably what's gonna exist in the end we're, we're also we haven't done enough work in materials I mean thorium is more than just a interesting thing to fry up inside a reactor of your choice. So also an unbelievable metal. And we've done very, very little work in learning about the, the catalytic nature of it, the alloys of it, uh, the medicines, Magthor. You know, we have at our shop uh, thoriated uh, tungsten welding rods that you can still buy. You know, so there's, there's probably vast uses for thorium. One of the one of the most interesting uses is as a it, it's right underneath cerium, correct? And they use cerium to crack petroleum products in cracking columns. So there's some people looking at thorium to even increase the cracking of petroleum. So there's a lot of excellent uses, and I would strongly encourage anybody in here looking for something to do in the world of thorium outside of energy to to do that. It's important work, and so. You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this stuff. You know, the idea of renewables are still critically flawed. Uh, uh, those uh, solar cells in the lower uh, corner there are uh, Puerto Rico. That didn't work out so well. And, uh, you know, that's, a, that's, that's not a very old wind turbine nacelle that you see up there. Uh, but, you know, they... You know, they claim they're upgrading them, but they're just leaving the garbage in the fields, and uh, they, it's an incredibly difficult thing to... But the trouble is they're winning. You know, they're, they're, they're winning. They're kicking our asses. You know, they're, they, they, they are telling a story paid for by natural gas. Uh, some of you guys that uh, look at some of these mailing lists see that new British Petroleum ad out there. We believe in a strong renewable energy future, backed up with natural gas. It's like, oh, yeah, so... So it's like, well, at least they're, you know, they're not even hiding it anymore. They're just like, yeah, you make electricity for 1% to 5% of the time. The other 95% of the time we'll use clean burning gas and try not to leak more than 50% of our methane to the atmosphere. So one of the things that uh, hopefully you can come away from this conference, I mean, if there's an actual work product to come out of this conference, it's that hopefully you guys will learn some new messages to deliver and maybe how to deliver them. We've had, we have some excellent folks from like Echo Modernist and such that will talk about that. Uh, you know, we need to learn how to change millions of minds. And, uh, you know, but uh, here's the deal, you know, facts don't change minds, all right? 
It's true. If anyone listens, or if you look into research, like how do you change someone's mind? Well, you do it by getting people that other people trust. So, you know, you get an environmentalist who's converted over to the nuclear world to talk to other environmentalists. You know, you get a very conservative guy to talk to other conservative guys, get other liberal guys. So people don't trust you if you aren't one of them. So that's lesson number one. I wouldn't mind it if you helped reach influencers, you know, just like the hip kids today. Uh, you know, everyone wants to be an influencer. I hear it's a good way to make money without having any talent. So, uh, but these guys have all expressly said that they support Thorium. Herbie Hancock, if you see all that video, it'll blow your brains apart. This guy just stops a concert in the middle of it and starts talking about thorium molten salt reactors. You're like, what? You know, and, uh, and, to, and you know, Andrew Yang, you know, I, I hesitated putting him up there because I didn't, you know, the whole point of this is I don't want it to be political. That, that defeats my other point. I don't want this guy because then people just shut down, right? But, you know, whatever, he's up there. You know, he, you gotta give him some credit. He said the word thorium, so. But you know, the really, the most important guy up there would be this Bo Willman. Who's he? He's the guy who did House of Cards and a bunch of other shows. Wouldn't it be great if he did another show based on, uh, you know, critical materials and thorium and the race to have the energy of the future? That guy is an influencer, you know? So I'd really ask for you, and Seth MacFarlane did the Cosmos series. <coughs> Uh, you know, a lot of people don't don't realize that he's a big science and nuclear supporter. So, you know, help reach out to these guys or anyone else. You know, you know, I don't I don't have hope. All right, Jim and I and Vince were sitting outside the hotel last night and talking about stuff along these lines. I'm like, I, I don't have hope. You know, this is my little Greta Thunberg moment. You know, you know, don't don't throw this hope crap at me. I don't want I don't want your hope. Hope, you know, hope in a buckle by a cup of coffee, all right? Hope is a distraction. You know, it's, it's you know, you can hope and pray, and that, uh, that gets you nothing. You know, I have work. That's what I have, right? So I have work to do, and, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I do what I can to actually get things built and get things done and get things through regulatory and get policy to be changed. And if we do our work, you know, then we can win, all right? You know, so stop hoping and start doing. That's what I, my command to you is, you know. Uh, so what I, do I believe in? You know, if you want something uh, nebulous to believe in, I believe that energy equals wealth. Robert Hargraves has been saying this for ages and ages. And, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna reduce population, make everyone wealthy. If you wanna preserve the environment, make everyone wealthy. You know, there's, there's so many knock-on effects to making people wealthy via giving them abundant energy. You know, I know we can get out of these, these nightmares and solve these problems. You know, we have national security issues you hear us talk about. There's climate issues, you know, for real, some climate and deindustrialization. You know, people need jobs. And if, if we just created jobs just to re-industrialize the United States and, uh, you know, build these hundreds and hundreds of reactors we need, There'd be a lot of jobs for our kids and our friends' kids and support our retirements, all that good stuff. You know, so I believe, you know, we can be interstellar and uh, not idiocracy, all right? So, so I mean, that, that's, that's, my, that's my real belief, that we don't have to go down this, this nightmarish, you know, path. You know, Tomorrowland can be more than just a crappy ride at Disneyland, okay? <laughs> You know, if we're successful, it can be our future. So, that's it. Thank you. You're the future of energy, folks. <laughs>